so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, o'er the ramparts we The following broadcast is an official production of the Faulkner Sports Network. Oh, and takes the kill right there. Now there's only one guy left. He knows exactly where he is. Throws grenade. Nice! Excellent. Yes. Bush going to try to slip around the back here. Oh, gets one. And a second. Down. Really? Yeah, just down to Will, who's the only one left. We got all right, takes two, two kills. Three. Wow. It's all down to Brandon and Cole now. Fires at one guy coming off his balcony. Gets one kill. Oh, my gosh, the long-range headshot with the pistol. Looks like Corn Pop's trying to set up a long shot here, but doesn't even have op. He's just got a rifle. <laughs> oh, wow. And does. What a shot. The equivalent of Molly from Counter Terrace. Oh, nice read on that first nice. pick. And the second. Nice. Welcome in, folks. Thank you so much for being with us here in Regitar USA High Res Arena for our final CS2 and final game of the season. Uh, we're going to be going up against the University of Wisconsin Madison. So it's Eagles versus Badgers in today's game. Thank you so much for being with us here for the broadcast. I'm head coach Caleb Gawkwit. And I'm Joshua Chalchi. And we're going to be bringing you all of the coverage for this evening's festivities. Going to have a lot of terrorists, a lot of counter terrorists, a lot of things blowing up, and a lot of people getting shot so it should be a fun time sounds very productive <laughs> so we'll be, we'll go ahead and introduce our players this evening let's go ahead and take a peek inside registrar usa high res arena uh, over there on the far left that is raptor claw ethan dixon getting ready for the game and then in the middle we have the captain of the team that's going to be corn pop he is one bad dude uh, that is Cole Armstrong. And then over to his right, that's William Howard, Folk Hydra. And he is going to be bringing up on the, uh, uh, going to be up there on the right side of your screen. On the other side of the arena, underneath the big Regitar USA High Res Arena sign, you've got Brandon Dishman, the Super Dish. And over there in the middle next to him, we've got Creed Spivey. So he just saw himself on the screen, so he's waving. So, uh, and his screen name, real easy to remember, it's just, it's Creed. That's a great screen name, by the way. It is, because it never confuses me, so I'm all there for it. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to go ahead and get underway here in a second. We're actually going to be able to not have a ton of lag time here. They're already in warm-ups, uh, so they should, uh, um, we should be able to bring that action to you here in just one second shouldn't take too long at all in the meantime just so everybody knows we have been uh an update from yesterday's game we've had three games in two days it's craziness for this team honestly <laughs> yeah i mean these guys are doing the best that they can but they've had a very stacked schedule in a very short amount of time so for those of you who may not remember yesterday's game against purdue 
that was actually supposed to happen as our very first game of the season. And it wound up not happening because literally two days before the start of our season, we changed from CSGO to CS2, and that just threw a monkey wrench in everybody's plans. Yeah, the game was like, nah, we're going to take a break for a minute, you know? Right, which, <laughs> honestly, I agreed with that decision. I understand why Nace made it, but it also made it very difficult for us because that meant that our whole schedule got shifted and they moved the, everybody's first game to the last week of the season. Uh, I wish they had moved it, like, maybe to the middle or something. Like, I understand they didn't want it to be that first week, but uh, I would have um, really appreciated uh, them being able to move it, like, maybe in the middle? So, uh, unfortunately, that's, uh, that's where it is. But we played them yesterday, and so now we're playing Wisconsin-Madison, our regularly scheduled game this week, and so that's our third game of the week. Uh, so you can see there they're warming up. They're uh, just kind of getting used to everything. But, yeah, so unfortunately last night in that doubleheader against first Auburn and then Purdue right afterward, Faulkner was unable to come up with a win in either of those games, and that means that they're mathematically eliminated from the playoffs. So even if they win here, they would not have a postseason. However, it would be really nice to just have a win to go out on a high note with the season. Yeah. That would be fantastic for us if we could just make that happen. It'd give a really good morale boost, you know? Oh, for sure. 100%. And so, you know, the, the guys may not have stakes in terms of it going any further, but it would be really big for them, just like Josh was saying, in terms of a morale boost and, and going into the next season, which will be starting in January, to be able to get this win here tonight. So hopefully we're able to do that. Uh, you see there, the guys are uh, just sort of getting ready. And um, it looks like now if... Oh, and we're actually underway, so this is knife round. So Faulkner is going to be on CTs this time. Now, if last night is any teacher, they actually did a funny thing where they switched between knife round and pistol round. So they may do that again here. We may actually be on uh, counter-terrorist first, and then Wisconsin will play terrorist. However... Even if that winds up being the case, and it looks like we've won the knife round, uh, which of course doesn't count towards your win total. They just killed themselves. Yeah, like, <laughs> nobody cares about right knife round. It's basically a lag test. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so they're about to get underway here, and we do indeed have Faulkner being CTs this time, so that rule did hold, so uh, we've got uh, Faulkner on the counter-terror uh, counter side, and then uh, Wisconsin Madison is going to be on the terrorist side. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to switch that. We'll have to switch that scoreboard. Um, so, anyway, yeah, so that same thing as they were doing last night, it just switches after knife round. So, uh, Faulkner going to be playing defense on Inferno, and this is a map they're very familiar with. It's extremely popular in the meta. If you watch any, like, pro CS2 matches, you'll rarely ever see a game that doesn't have Inferno on it at some point. So, they, both teams probably very familiar with this map, and frankly, I'm, I'm fine with that. Corvup's up on a ledge here, trying to get a sneaky little pick. Yeah, that's a, that's a boost position. Uh, behind B. So that's it, a really nice spot, too. Yeah, because the thing is, if you get shot, normally they're not expecting it. It looks like he dismounts from that, and uh, they are going to be going B. Hmm. But unfortunately, oh man, uh, not good. Super Dish had an unfortunate, um, or sorry, Spolk Hydra had an unfortunate reload there, uh, ill timed for him. So now Faulkner down to a 2v3 and Corn Pop, I mean, barely has any HP left. Mm -hmm. Reloading is the bane of any FPS player's uh, existence. Oh, for sure. And Corn Pop trying to make something happen here, uh, but he knows if he takes any damage at all, he's done for, and now it's just him. If he can clutch up here and get a win, that'll be like the play of the century, especially in pistol round. I, from what I've seen, uh, Super Dish is, is really good with pistols. Yeah, he is. He's one of our better pistol guys. Okay, so, yeah, Corn Pop, unfortunately, not able to get a win there. Uh, and I said that it would be difficult for him to, to get one there. And, uh, I mean, it's possible he could have gotten a win if he had done something different. But, I mean, frankly, the odds were just way too stacked against him at that point. So, unfortunately, that means Wisconsin-Madison takes first blood. 
and they will be uh, winning the first round. Looks like we got a shot, a shotgun and pistols for the first round. Yeah, especially with them not winning the first round, they've decided to not blow their ammo um, or blow their their econ, econ on. Yeah. Um, you know, good strategy from uh, the Eagles here. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want them to blow a lot of money here either. Especially since Faulkner tends to be better at, at counterpicking than picking, like they need to learn their opponent's play style, and so it makes more sense to on the second round where they're still learning that, just use it as a, a learning round and then uh, try to come back with a win. Looks like, it looks like Faulkner's down two guys, and they've already planted a bomb. It looks like a very uphill fight right here. Although, we, we still have a shotgun left, so you never know. <laughs> yeah, could be. Um... It looks like they have a pretty well-guarded defensive position here on A, and I think that Superdish and Will, or sorry, uh, Superdish and Corn Pop are going to be kind of looking to do something here, but yeah. They took just, one, but he did die. Yeah, so they are able to take one life. That's going to help them a little bit on Econ, but it's not going to, not going to be much. Yeah. Looks like they're gearing up a little bit. Trying to get a lot of throwables, and lots of incendiaries, lots of uh, smoke. Yeah, and that's the thing too. Uh, it's much more important for the CTs to have those than it is for the Ts because yeah. it's just so important to a defensive position to be able to set up smokes and uh, incendiaries and whatnot. Yeah. So Woodpecker gonna Molly here, and Molly's right into apps. Raptor Claw Con trying to get a really cheeky position right here, trying to get a off angle almost. Yeah, and he knows that that's a good position for him to have because if they wind up killing his teammate who's in front of them, he'll be in a perfect position to take them by surprise. But it looks like that's not where they're going. They're going to be going on a full A rush. Creed's kind of crouching his way behind enemy lines, trying to get some sort of pick here. Yeah. Um, they essentially are running exactly the same play they did last round where they just uh, do a quick rush to A, set up, and then now they're on defense instead of offense. And now it's down to Folk Hydra. Um, at this point, it's smarter for him to save just because it's early, they're only two down, but oh. it looks like they found him. Unfortunately, Folk Hydra does get taken down right there. Just a little bit surprised, I think. Yeah, full Elim without losing a single man. That's a really bad round for Faulkner. Uh, I think Folk Hydra made the smart decision just holding his position and trying not to uh, not to move. But unfortunately, they were able to find him. Yeah. Looks like we have an interesting s uh, arrangement of guns for the second round. We have a pistol. Um, we have a... More of a long range rifle, I think. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's a lower grade rifle, but a rifle nonetheless. And then we have uh, sort of more short range weapons here. Yeah. So it looks like they're gonna rush banana, and that's not good because Faulkner put three defenders on A, so it's gonna be very difficult for them to hold on to B. Raptor Claw's gonna try and make a, uh, a sneaky push here behind new lines. Yeah, but they uh, he's gonna try to go through church and it looks like he's able to get one, Ooh. but not not a second. And so now it's down to Raptor Claw and Raptor Claw is taken down. Yeah, honestly with that, it, here's the reason that smokes can be so effective. It's not even necessarily that they're blocking off one uh, strategy. It's that they bottlenecked him to the only route he had to bomb. And when he did try to go through church, they were there waiting on him because, of course, that's the only route he can take. Yeah. Looks like the entire uh, Wisconsin team is very stacked with just a bunch of throwables, really good mm -hmm. weapons, and they have a lot of econ right now. Uh, it's going to be a very uphill fight for Faulkner, but it can it can be done. Um, yeah, CSGO was much more swingy than CS2. Getting an early advantage is a much bigger deal in CS2 than it was in CSGO, and I'm not even sure I understand exactly why. It just seems to be that that's, that's been the pattern since CS2 got the upgrade. Yeah. Also, we have Vortex really, really, really low on health right now. Mm -hmm. He's going to try to make a throw of a flash over a wall. I don't think I don't think it hit anybody, but I could be wrong. <laughs> I didn't see it hit anybody. Trying to get a shot in. Raptor Claw trying to hold a uh, a very passive position right here. Yeah, so this is one of the trickier positions in 
the game is playing back there in what they call shadow. It's uh, really, really. Ooh. Oh, wow. He got two. Yeah. Two headshots. A, headshots with a pistol. Oh, man. That was Cor beautiful. Corn pop popping people. He's a bad dude. He is a bad dude. <laughs> and it looks like Blackbird is going to plant here. So Raptor Claw and Super Dish both have diffusers. Ooh. Oh, no. Yeah, now down to Super Dish. I was going to say, with a 2v3, definitely not great odds, but something that they could make happen. But with just one person, that's going to be really hard for Super Dish to clutch up here. Dish has got a really good angle right here, but he just needs a really good opportunity moment. Yeah, he just gave away his position, and it was very difficult for him to come back after that. So, yeah. Now, they were watching Banana, so he had, like, maybe a chance. Did get a lot a, a lot more kills that round than, than the previous ones, which means we will have a chance to have more econ this time, get more better equipment. And come in a little bit stronger, I feel like, in next round. Yeah, and you're going to see that. You're going to see much more rifles. It looks like Dish has been saving for a while, so he's going to get something a little bit nicer this time. I can't wait until they bring in an RPG into this game. <laughs> yeah, probably not going to be anytime soon. <laughs> not Call of Duty 3. Nah, you're right. <laughs> Which I've heard is, like, bizarrely tanking right now. A lot of people are not happy with the uh, new Call of Duty. Really? Yeah, that's what I've heard. I, I don't play um, Call of Duty, so I don't know. But I played it a little bit before college, but not a whole lot. All right, and here we go. Corn Pop going to be moving around here, trying to set up a defensive position. It looks like they are splitting up. So they're running a gambit where they've got three on A, and so now <laughs> you've got uh, the Faulkner team kind of rotating back and forth, not sure exactly where they're going to strike. Raptor probably kind of trying to sit in a spot where he's just able to like kind of stay away from fight, but it's able but yeah. the opponent team is able to hit them with an incendiary. That's a hard word to say for me. So it's actually <laughs> a molly for them because terrorists have mollies. Oh, uh, you right. have incendiaries. You're right. Uh, Raptor Claw trying to make a sneaky push here. Let's see if he can get something on right here. Yeah, he's got to do something here because... Only 40 seconds, or 45 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, but they're going to be able to plant. They've got control of sight. Uh, Wisconsin's playing very defensive, and it's kind of I feel like they're really good at playing defensively. Well, it's interesting that they they played defensively because they played offensively. So what they're doing is they're going for a lot of big hit and run, fast rushes, and then setting up camp whenever they plant. And yeah. it's been very effective for them so far. They've also been, and this is what I've noticed, they've been really good at psyching Faulkner out. Like you saw in that round that they actually rotated uh, to A and then r rotated back to B. And so they've yeah. kind of got them, because of their presence, they're able to trick them into going to the wrong spot. Yeah, and that, it's very confusing. <laughs> it's been a real problem. Uh, but props to Wisconsin-Madison for being able to pull that strategy off. That's a... Not always an easy one to do. Yeah. All right, and they are off. It looks like Raptor Claw is going to join Folk Hydra and go A, I think. Yeah. It looks like they're so, trying to do pistol round again. <laughs> they are. They're, they're doing another save round. So uh, they only have one person on A, and they're going to try to create presence there. So if they can win a one-on-one -on -one here and then Ooh. quickly rotate to B, they'll be in good shape. A little bit of a, a hit from one of our players with a pistol, but was just not able to get a kill. Okay, so they're... That's a lot of bombs. Yeah, they're, they're, they're mollying and smoking the... What? There's no way. Oh, Corn wow. Pop going crazy over here with the pistol. Two headshots coming in. Wow. All right, so now Raptor and, and Creed going to have to do something here. And this is not Creed's specialty. He's a much better early game than late game player because he's practiced on entry frag so much. Mm -hmm. So just kind of difficult for him to make a comeback like that. Yeah, we do get two kills this round, which means we do get a little bit more econ. But it was really crazy in the, first, in the very beginning of that round. They just tossed a whole bunch of smoke bombs and just rushed real fast. It's like, well, we're going to blind them and then we're going to go get them. And it worked really, really well. Yeah, so their strategy was essentially let's just mass confusion, and the second we've thrown everything, we rush in. A uh, very effective strategy worked very well for them. And they did that actually with four people instead of five, because you'll notice that they had another guy creating presence on A so that they didn't just stack it, because if they had run in that fast with five people on them, they would have 
lost easily. Yeah, I'm really surprised. We had a guy on ledge who just kind of looked down but wasn't able to get a, a pick on him. Yeah, Creed with op now, it'll be interesting to see how he uses that and how they use that to try to create space. Yep. All right, and uh, good grenade. It's a shame it doesn't quite kill. Left him on 8 HP. Yeah. Okay. Looks like we have a woodpecker coming up the stairs. Yeah. And they're going to try to rush through apps, it looks like. Now, bomb is actually all Ooh. the way back on mid. Raptor Claw trying to hold a, a really small angle right here, but it was just kind of pushed out. Hey, but uh, good good on him for realizing that and being able to move Ooh. out of the way. Whoa. Woodpecker did get Raptor Claw. Was that? No, that was Corn Pop. No, that was Corn Pop. Yeah, Corn Pop was in pit. Unfortunately. And they're able to plant and set up a defense. So now it's down to Raptor and Folk. Uh, let's see, Raptor Claw with a silenced pistol and a sniper. I respect the <laughs> the sniper pig, honestly. Oh yeah. Well, well seeing those crisp headshots. They do need something to give them an advantage and uh, granted, that may not be the best for this particular situation. Oh wow, but he is able to get Blackbird, so. Yep. Nice headshot with op there. Looks like you're only on 15 HP. Yep. That's the end of the round. Yep. Another two kills on the board, but unable to secure a victory. Yep. Uh, bomb is able to go off. Now, one thing to remind the audience, it's a, a weird quirk of the way that we have to do broadcasting here. We actually can't hear bomb. So, <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't get game audio. I know y'all do at home, but we don't. How long does it take for bomb to go off? 40 seconds. 40 seconds. Mm -hmm. That's a very tight window. Yeah, so 40 seconds after plant. And and the thing is, it can extend the round. So, yeah. like, it takes four seconds to plant. So, if you theoretically have five seconds on the clock and then you plant, all of a sudden the timer stops. And instead of having two minutes on the, or I guess 155 on the clock, you have 40 seconds until bomb goes off. So, it can actually extend the clock as well. Yeah. It's Creed. He's being sneaky. Yes, sir. Love to see it. And uh, Faulkner does have the numbers advantage right now. Sonar going to peek out through apps here. Creed's trying to take a very hard scoped position right here. Mm -hmm. Trying to just find someone just to walk in his path. Um, looks like they're just using a bunch of uh, throwables and trying to make their presence known. Trying to get into a... Uh, and they're making a, a push right here. Yep, they are. Uh, and he does take a shot on Aps, but unfortunately winds up hitting him in the leg. It's almost a trade. Yep. They do take one more than we, um, than we did. Yeah, this Wisconsin team just fantastic at being able to get on site quickly and plant. Mm. So they know where he is. It's just a matter of time before he peeks out. Yeah, and that's the thing. Once you plant, you actually Ooh. switch, and so you make the other team have to peek on you as opposed to having to peek on them. Yeah. And now with Corn Pop down, Hopper. Yeah. Well, I say that. No, he's, he's still got it. Maybe not. Terrorists win. Ah, oh, shoot. Unfortunate. Like, we're able to get it. I didn't even see you make it. <laughs> Be honest, I yeah. Looks like we're playing another round where we just have a, a very strange-ish array of weapons. Uh, we have a lot of long-range assault rifles, and is that two um, SMGs? Yes. We do have a little bit more throubles this round, and we do have a wire cutter or the fusing kit. Sorry. Yes. Don't be a loser. Bye. <laughs> oh goodness. So we have Raptor Claw holding a, a very tight position again. That's a very small window to get a kill, but it can happen. Sonar kind of pushing his way back and throwing and trying to they're making another uh push. They're just swapping around. They're going all the way to the other point. Like, yeah. abandoning this point just to go get the other one. 
Yeah, so you're seeing the rotation. What they did was they made a lot of noise very quickly, and now they're going to rotate through B. So heavy attack on B now. Blackbird takes three with a sniper. That's crazy. This guy's got insane accuracy. Yeah, dude is uh, quite deadly. They did plant. So he doesn't get credit for the kills, though. He just... She sort gets of set it up. full Hydra, and then she also gets... That guy got so many... They went only snipers that round. They did. That's five ops. You don't see that very often. That's a lot. Goodness. Yeah, but I mean, when you win nine rounds in a row, you can buy five ops. Granted, I wouldn't say that that's a sound strategy, but obviously it worked for them in this particular round. Although it makes sense if you're going to do a long B rush. I still wouldn't have five ops, but having extra ops makes sense if you're going to go a banana rush. Bah, who needs money? <laughs> money, it's not important. Mm. Looks like it's Creed is trying to make a, a push down to the right of them, kind of sneaky. Uh, trying to hold angles that they wouldn't see. Dr. Plop Top does get hit in the head by a sniper shot. Yep. Goodness, that's scary. Mm. This, this game kind of seems to favor their snipers quite a bit, don't they? So, I would say that of all of the maps, Inferno's probably the best well, I say that. Um, Mirage is probably better, but it, it uh, it's a very sniper-friendly map, for sure. Oh my gosh. That was a quick scope and a half right there. Yep. Gotta give this team credit where credit is due. It's a, it takes a lot of practice to get that accurate with the sniper. Yep. And it looks like they're going to continue to buy op, uh, which is interesting. Uh, well, I say that. One of them actually goes shotgun. Uh, two of them? No, two of them now. Yes, you're correct. They all went shot. And almost all of them went shotgun. No, they all went shotgun this time. Okay, well, that's interesting. Ah, who needs money? <laughs> well, not them. Looks like uh, Sonar is trying to come up behind the team with a lot of throwables. They all have a lot of throwables. I guess that's what you expect in CS2, though. There's lots of throwy things. Yeah, a lot of teams actually, if they're a little bit hurting for econ, they will prefer throwables over getting a nice gun. Really? Because of how crucial they are. Yeah, if you watch competitive, you'll notice that that is the case. So interesting that they haven't planted yet. Um, they're getting a little bit... Ooh! Uh, ooh! Oh, two okay! 2v2! Woodpecker on the side trying to reload. Really, the shotgun takes a little while. And Raptor gonna try to slip across the back here with a rifle. They are planting. They did get the plant off. They did get the plant. We have two rifles versus two shotguns. Statistically, we should be in favor right now. Mm, depends. It depends on if we're forced into a close range uh, fight. Because if that happens, then shotgun would win. Yeah. And I think that that's why you're seeing the other guys not peek. Because first of all, they're playing defensively, so they don't have to. And then second of all, and I would say even more importantly, if they've got shotgun, they want the other guys to have to peek. Oh. Right. So you see what he did there? He actually made a shot oh. to try to distract to give Corn Pop a chance to get in there. But so close. Uh, unfortunately, it was not. It didn't work. And so here we are at match point, uh, switching sides. So we're going to see... Faulkner on the terrorist side for this round. Faulkner's gonna go crazy. Yep. <laughs> All right. So, does Faulkner first round of the second half? Uh, gonna see pistol round. Huh? Does Faulkner's uh, CSGO team do they like um, terrorist or do they do they prefer counter terrorist more? It really depends on the map. Really? So I think they actually prefer counter terrorist on Inferno, which is the one they're on now. But normally I would say they they tend to take the counter terrorist on nuke and um, nuke and mirage. We're up in numbers advantage right now. Yep. Well we're uh, Woodpecker able to get a kill with the double uh, berettas. And now it's down to Folk Hydra, and they surround him in smoke. And somehow Will makes it out of that. Oh my gosh! 
Willis made it all the way the to college man for real. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, that was crazy. That was the craziest round ever. The highlight reel? Will almost. <laughs> Will. Could you imagine? If Will had won that round, that would be. He was at a 5v1 and got it down to a 1v1. The and clutch man is actually... They were literally <laughs> surrounding him in smoke, and he made it out. It was... he He's Batman. <laughs> <laughs> smoke goes down. All the guys are around him. He just, like, grapnels out of the smoke. <laughs> Will goes crazy, actually. <laughs> he is the knight. <laughs> so... Uh, well, obviously not the result you want to see, um, Faulkner losing that round 13 to nothing, but I mean, look at Will right now. <laughs> it's just, he's so It, it might have been a bad round, but it ended on such a high note. Yeah. You gotta admit, that was awesome. For sure. You can look at Will, like, right now in the arena, and I know you guys can't see him, but, like, he's got a huge smile on his face. Like, he's, he's, yeah. he was chuckling <laughs> so hard at that, but... Anyway, uh, their warm-up has already started, so it looks like next round we're going to be going Vertigo, which is one that Faulkner feels fairly comfortable on. I would say it's not their best map. Uh, I would say it's probably third okay. on the ones that they've practiced the most, but it's definitely one that they have seen a lot of. They've played on a lot. Um, I think that this is another one where they favor terrorists a little bit. Um, so you're going to see them if they wind up going terrorist first, which I don't know if they will or not. It depends on how they, they did with the coin flip. Uh, but you'll see in the next or in the last round, I don't know if they chose to go CT first or not, but either way, here they are uh, about to get started. Their warmups already underway. And so we should be, uh, getting to them in just a second, as soon as we get the uh, server set up and, uh, Joseph captain of the team. Uh, his, uh, I'm actually watching one of his screens now in the warm up. So, uh, by the way, Wisconsin Madison folks, uh, they uh, were messaging us earlier to make sure that we were able to get into the server. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, seemed like a nice guy. Um, and it looks like they're actually practicing shotgun right now. So. Uh, we should be getting underway because remember that they do have that two and a half minute delay. So, yep. Uh, we'll be we getting. Oh, and there we go. Corn pop. And here's the man himself. That's that's Volk Hydra right there. <laughs> yeah, Volk Hydra riding high off of that last round. I would too, man. That, yeah. that was crazy. That was un insane. I would have loved it so much. Like I know that there wasn't much chance we would have won that round, but if Volk Hydra just single handedly won the round. <laughs> Uh, that would have made my night right there. It would have. <laughs> uh, to be honest, though, it still kind of did. Buy that man a Snickers. <laughs> I don't know why Snickers. I just picked that one. You got yourself and you're hungry. I am hungry. <laughs> I'm not myself right now. Who am I sitting with? Oh, no. <laughs> Ever tried peanut butter Snickers? Peanut butter Snickers is where it's at. I have not, but it does sound pretty good. All right, so knife round here. Lots of stabby stabby going on. This is Among Us, I swear. <laughs> That's where Brandon got his name, for those of you that... Or his uh, his call... Uh, not his name, Super Dish, obviously comes from his last name. But uh, the whole One Tough Teletubby thing, it was from that uh, Among Us round. <laughs> one Tough Teletubby. I mean, you're not wrong. You're yeah. not wrong. That was, that was funny. It's one Tough Teletubby. Show him how it's done, Tinky Winky. I'm surprised I haven't seen Super Dish from the gap yet, honestly. Yeah, you know, he usually goes Negev for at least one round. It's one of his, like, um, Hail Mary kind of things. Is like, he just... Yeah, he doesn't go to it in a normal round. He goes to it when, like... Because, I mean, it is expensive, and it's not terribly effective, except in very specific situations. Yeah. Um, it may, hey, he makes it work. He does. It's a very unconventional thing. Yeah. Uh... Super dish with a Negev is like that meme. It's like uh, Dan DeVito is like. So anyway, I started blasting. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> that is like Super Dish's spirit animal. <laughs> Danny DeVito blasting a wallet with a machine gun. <laughs> All right, so we're on pistol round already. Uh, it looks like. 
I cannot tell because we don't have scoreboard up yet, but it looks like one of us is down. One of them is down. Oh, so we just won. Cool. Yeah, good job by uh, Corn Pop. He gets the final kill. Um, very good job. I love I love watching uh, Faulkner play pistol around because they just got such accurate shots and it just works so well. For sure, for sure. Looks like we're going for a a shotgun, three shotguns, a knife, and a pistol. Oh no, never mind. Ah uh, man, that's a good movie. Three shotguns. Three shotguns, a knife, and a pistol. Ah, uh, one of my favorites. <laughs> I can only imagine, Coach. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't you watch a movie called Three Shotguns, a Knife, and a Pistol? I mean, it would be entertaining. Yep. Oh, uh, and uh, unfortunately, Cyclone and Blackbird simultaneously getting headshots on Raptor Paul and Super Dish. So now, at a big numbers disadvantage, it's just Volk Hydra and Creed left. Ooh. And wow, the shotgun from a pretty good distance, actually. And now it's mm. down to uh, Creed. Hey, In Creed. a 2v1, he could make something happen here, maybe. But three, it's a 3v1 right now. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I... There's two, he just got surrounded right there. There's way too many people. Yep, but he's now still it's got down to a 2v1. I um, mean... Unfortunately, they know where he is. Yeah, oh. at, at that distance, a shotgun versus two guys with a rifle, just or uh, two guys with long-range guns, just not not a good combination. Brother started seeing red. He just wanted to get them. Well, I think he thought that they were looking for him, and so he assumed that they would be closer. Yeah. So that's why he popped when he did, but they were all the way across the way. And that's smart on their end anyway. Like, if you have the long-range guns, you actually want to stay further away from where you think they are. Yep. Uh, looks like we're going for more of a, uh, a save round right here, honestly. Yeah, Got looks it. like it. With a one, uh, one to one tie, it makes sense to go for a save round. Just yeah. wait, and especially a CT, you want to make sure your econ's good for the. We are down game. two players. Right, and they're planting. This is a great time for push. Play. <laughs> yeah, they plant on A. Ah, but now it's just super dish left, and he does have defusal. But like the idea of him being able to. Beat five guys by himself is just, I mean, yeah, Folk Hydra can do it, but. Oh, and Super Dish does get one kill. But now they know where he is, so he's in trouble. I, I want to see him one up. Um... <laughs> oh, that'd be fantastic. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> he, he, took, he took two. He did take two. I mean, that, that was pretty like good. Like I said, that dude is one tough Teletubby. One that, uh, tough Teletubby. He just. We need to get a shirt just for him that says one tough toe. I told I told you we're making shirts when we do our uh, photo shoot. Um, we're getting one of Corn Pop, and we're going to get, like, Corn Pop, one bad dude. Yep. That would work. That would work. I will wear that T-shirt with Corn Pop's face on it. <laughs> Corn Pop for, for election, you know. <laughs> Corn Pop for president. 2025. Corn Pop, 2024. One bad dude. <laughs> <laughs> He's got my vote already. <laughs> right? <laughs> Better than the other candidates. All right, looks like Faulkner's trying to pepper them with a lot of throws, but they're out on those. Um, yeah, so they decided to go super hard on... Ooh. Oh, and are able to get a kill off of it, uh, but unfortunately, they go down just as quickly. So uh, now Corn Pop, very, very injured and... And is able to get another kill. Let's go. Okay. It is even Down to a right 2v2. Oh. Ah, shoot. 2v1. Yep. Dish is taken down with Corn a shotgun. Corn Pop, though. Corn Pop is still in it. Come on, Corn Pop. Show us why you're a bad dude. <laughs> Corn Pop with the knife out. And it looks like they're going to plant on B site. Yep. So Corn Pop's going to have to make something happen here. And it looks like, is he going to rotate to mid? No, he's going to rotate to ramp. I don't know that that's a smart move, considering how outnumbered he is, but he may not have a choice. Wait, so the fire to go out. There's a frag grenade. Yep, they know where he is now. That's not good. Oh. Yep, as soon as he moved out, they had two trained on him, so even if he killed yep. one, they were going to get him. So just in a bad position, but I mean, he didn't really have a choice because yeah. he had to go for it right there or else bomb was going to go off. Yeah, it's a respectable decision, but it's just unfortunate. Yeah, sometimes people do things that seems like a 
dumb decision in the moment, but when you consider the larger context of the situation they were in, it actually makes perfect sense, and that was one of those. Yeah, it looks like they're going for another save round with a bunch of pistols. So it looks like they're going to actually split this time as well, which is interesting. They're going to try to confuse the other team. This is a tactic that was used against them a lot on Inferno, uh, where they had different people try to create a diversion in one spot to sort of lure people away, and it looks like it's actually working. Get him with a, uh, a gosh dang uh, divide and conquer. Right. <laughs> so now they've kind of forced them to go uh, through mid up to B. Yep. And you can see that the team is rotating. They uh, unfortunately Just are able get to get outgunned. Yeah. We did take one though. Yeah, Corn Pop able to get the headshot on Blackbird. But bomb has been planted, and now Faulkner is at a big numbers disadvantage. Woodpecker's just standing in the middle of fire. It's awesome. That's such a good scene you know, when you see someone just standing in the midst of fire and not taking burn damage. <laughs> Moses. <laughs> That's the bush. Terrorists win. No, coach, he wasn't standing in the bush. No, he was not standing in the bush. You are correct. All right, looks like they did win that round. But looks like we saved up just enough so we're able to get a little bit better um, loadout this time. We do have one pistol, a few assault rifles, and a, a, actually, a tip, no, no pistol. Two really long-range assault rifles, which is good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have not even close to as many throwables as the other team does, but nonetheless, we will still use them. So the truth is, though, uh, in a map like this, having all of that utility isn't as big an advantage as you would think. Really? Because if you're the terrorist, you're coming from below at both sites. Mm. And so because of that, they can't throw up as well. And so while, yes, it is an advantage to have good econ, and especially with the guns, having better utility isn't as big an advantage in Vertigo as it is in a lot of other maps. Yeah. Bulk Hydra is so super dish being around. super sneaky hanging out in midair back there. He's flying. That's why he's super dish. He can fly. <laughs> All right. Cyclone is taking a very good spot in the back away from the fight and a really good angle. And just, the team is just really well coordinated, coordinated and just get three headshots in a row. Their aim is impeccable tonight. Yeah. Uh, Wisconsin Madison, not one of the like higher ranked teams in our league but i'm a actually kind of surprised that they're not considering how well they've played tonight their accuracy is on point because i think that i mean they are going to the playoffs so they are like i think fourth right now yeah but still extremely impressive performance by wisconsin madison this evening all right and they're gonna frag grenade Ragnar Claw trying to get a cheeky position in the back. Yep. Wanting to sort of lure them in. See, that's the thing, too. A lot of people think the smartest play as a CT is to set up a perimeter as early as possible so they have to fight their way through. And sometimes that can be Good the case. Our bombs. Yep. <laughs> but sometimes it's also smarter to just let your opponent kind of come to you and they come to a site. So it just depends on what strategy you're using. Bombs are planted. Yep. That's just a lot of chaos going on right here. Mm -hmm. um, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> the chaos that they create when they throw just like, like what is it, like 10, 12 doubles at once? Right. It's just so much that it just makes... Uh, it's sort of sensory overload. Yeah, exactly. We have two players left. Let's see what they're going to do. They gotta do something because they only got a few seconds left on the on the bomb. Yep, corn pop is looks like he's gonna save. Terrorists win. Yep, and that's, and that's exactly right. what happened. Yep. On to the next round. Let's see what's gonna happen. Yep. The, the entirety of the opponent team has uh, AKs. Um, yeah, which is a good position to be in. Yeah. You want the AKs if you're on T. That's just the meta right now. They're the most effective and cost-effective rifle. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you could go op here, but the truth is there's not a ton of cause for op on Terrorist on Vertigo. I'm not saying that you never use it, but 
with the exception of a handful of strategies, there's just not much cause for op on Vertigo if you're T's. Now, if you're CT's, Vertigo, yeah. like, op makes sense, but... Alright, both teams are down one player. Um, let's see what we can do. They're pushing up, right? Yeah. They hide down. Flash bomb. A flash oh. bang got them. Down. Oh! Oh, one shot? Two? Oh! Oh, man! Folk Hydra! Almost three! Holy crap! That was crazy! Folk Hydra takes two down and uh, puts a lot of damage on the third. So now can Raptor Claw make something out of the gift that Will gave him? And it looks like Daisy's going to... They're going to rotate and they're going to head B. Yeah, they got... That, I'd be scared if they just out to be my players. Let's get, like, headshot killed by, by the opponents. I'd so what Raptor Claw wants to do here is... And he's doing the smart thing by going the opposite direction. He has to kill right here. Yeah, I was about uh. to say. If he got that kill and then he just is a, in a 1v1 against the guy because they can't double team him despite their numbers while one of them's planting. But unfortunately, yeah. uh, as soon as he popped, the other guy was in position. He called the he, he called the position. Instead of going behind them, he guessed that Raptor Claw would rotate around to get them from the front. And he unfortunately guessed right because was able to get Ethan right as he moved into position there. Yeah. Looks like we are in a much better position now uh, with our econ and our guns now, so it's going to be a lot more balanced, um, in my opinion. No, I 100% agree. Um, when you're working with limited resources, it's very difficult to have a good round, but Faulkner, nowhere near their level of econ advantage, but it's going to be a Oh my gosh. That was, they were face to face with death. Oh, oh wow. There's one. Full Kydra, two. two? <laughs> Dude, Hydra's going crazy tonight. Bulk Hydra is just eating it. Creed in the back. Creed gets one from behind. Oh, they just nice. That was they surrounded them and were able to take the the game so nicely right there. Yeah, played the angles perfectly. Fantastic play for the Eagles on that one. You love to see the communication and the strategy behind behind the great moments like that. And right there, it just really meshed. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think they're getting a little bit um, used to playing around the chaos because this is a team that really likes to throw in as much chaos as possible. Yeah. And what you're seeing there is that Faulkner has just kind of gotten acclimated to it to where they can pull off their game plans despite the fact that they're seeing, like, random utilities going in all directions in some of these matches, and Faulkner has been able to work around that. Yeah. Looks like we got two players coming up the ramp, maybe. Yeah. I think they're honestly probably just waiting for someone to come down there after them. So we have one rotating to B. That's interesting. That might wind up in a firefight at mid, and it looks like it is. But unfortunately, Faulkner comes out on the raw end of that firefight. Yeah, Sonar does get a kill on... Who was that? I don't know. Raptor Claw. Oh, that was, that was Corn Pop. Oh... Yeah, Corn Pop's usually the one that rotates. Cyclone on... Is this A or B? No, this is A. This is A? I gotcha. Yeah, you can tell about the map as well. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Not my first time. <laughs> Alright, we got Folk Hydra in the bottom trying to get a kill. Um, okay, and a nice shot by Folk Hydra, but unfortunately Cyclone takes Super Dish at about the same time. And they're able to get Folk Hydra. But man, what a game by Folk Hydra, who has just like started popping off here in the last three rounds. He's on his game tonight, honestly. He really He'd is. Love to see it. Like you know, I think I think he's in his head. He's like, this is the last game. Let's like not go out with a whimper. Let's actually make some noise he's here. He's gotten two to three kills almost like every like for the past three rounds. He's yeah. gotten two to three. He's he's gotten consistently at least two kills and put damage on a third. That's that's nice. Yeah, it really is nice. All right, Hulk Hydra is gonna make an early shift to the stairs. Trying to bait him out, but he just won't come out of the little lip. Yeah, Raptor Hogala really loves this position behind Pillar. Uh-huh. There's a grenade. And it makes sense because he can kind of see the entirety of ramp from where he is, but he's somewhat covered himself. Yeah. So you can tell he's just, like, looking down, trying to see if he can spot anybody. 
Looks like they did move back down that way. Oh, oh no. Missed a yep. shot and it cost them. Yep. That's the thing about off. You're kind of completely exposed if you do happen to miss. Yep. Looks like Super just trying to sink his way out of the out of the uh, lines. Oh, ooh. that was that was kind of scary right there. A little bit. If he had just a, a split second of more reaction time, he would have had him too. Yeah. So now Folk Hydra by himself, unfortunately. Yeah. And they've essentially got control. Although they have bomb actually back. Oh, okay. I see what they were doing there. So yep. they were going with sort of a flex strategy and left bomb back at site so that they would know where it was. Their um, partner's putting up a, a lot more of a fight in the second round. You really like to see it. Yeah, I do think, like I said, they're just kind of acclimating themselves to their play style, and that's why you're seeing Faulkner put up a, a much better fight this round. I think, yeah, Creed gets uh, the fusing kit. Uh, actually, three of the players get the fusing kit. Hmm. Ball cards are holding stairs. Ooh. I hate that we can see things that they can't. <laughs> yeah. All right. Looks the knowing like have... is the hardest part. Yeah. A bomb to nowhere. Uh, that means that they're about to rush, I believe. Yeah. Hydra's got an angle on it. Let's see. Trying to throw that flashbang. On. Yeah, Guy, there we go. Folk Hydra gets somebody's left on only 14 HP. It's going to be quite hard to, to do anything with that small amount. Mm -hmm. well, at least we are but, up on kills right now. But he has the sniper rifle, so it's actually... Well, he winds up dying right there. But I was going to say, uh, if you wanted to have a position with a sniper rifle, uh, it would be like... Ooh, had, Creed's oh, nice. behind him. Creed, Creed playing Ring Around the Rosie there. It worked. I yep. mean, <laughs> I ain't mad at him. And now it's a 1v1. The bomb is planted, so you, uh -oh. you gotta do stuff fast. He's got op, though. That's not good. Creed needs to do something unexpected here. Cyclone is trying. Where'd that bomb go? Uh, I think he's trying to give away his position because he's trying to force him to peek. Oh, oh it, it worked. does. Yeah. Yep. That was a good round. That was a really good round. Faulkner almost bringing home the victory on that one. Uh, just a little bit short on it. Yeah, just came up a tad short because if Creed had been able to kill him there, he actually would have had time to defuse. And it looks like we're switching sides. Yes, that was the 12th round. So um, we have Faulkner pistol round for for a terrorist this time. Yep. And Creed doing his uh, spaz dance over there. Love to see it. <laughs> All right, we just got regular pistols. No, no uh, silencers or anything. <laughs> no, you don't want silencers. You you want to hear us coming. Ah yes. You know it's funny. They're they're Ooh. actually suppressors, not silencers, because they don't make the gun silent. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Now if only Faulkner can. Oh, oh, what a shot with a pistol headshot in the air. Corn Pop is a bad wow. dude. Wow, that is a bad dude. Imagine getting shot out of the air. Uh, I try not to do that, actually. Man, and Corn Pop gets a second kill. A third a kill. Third. <laughs> a 1v5? Uh, he finally does go down, but man, what a run by Corn Pop. One man army over here. <laughs> and Wisconsin Madison decides to hop in the John. I love how we're we're, uh, we're seeing a lot of really close clutch like <laughs> clutch plays where you see one player on our team just almost take down the entirety of their team, and it's just so funny. Yeah, Corn Pop playing uh, hide and go seek there is able to take down three. Came close to taking down a fourth. That was so funny. <laughs> Absolutely nuts. One of these days we're going to see it. We're going to go crazy when we do. Tonight would be the time to see it, too. Uh, I'd be up for it. All right. Super Dish with a knife in his hand. Imagine getting knifed right now. That'd be hilarious. Why do you keep wanting me to imagine painful ways to die? I gosh? would just... Not you. <laughs> well, you say I imagine would... getting... <laughs> There's something you need to tell me, Josh? Not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. 
All right, Cyclone is holding a. Oh no! Corn angle. Pop goes down. They didn't like him for what they did to his their that's, team. That's it. They 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 put a hit on him. <laughs> the entirety of the uh, of Faulkner is going down quite quickly. Yeah, unfortunately, they kind of got caught in a bad position. So I think that they were trying to. The play that they were expecting to run wound up falling and falling apart. Yeah. And unfortunately, that means we are at match point. Yep. So, Faulkner, no sense in saving your monies. Might as well spend it. Yep, that's a lot of that's a lot of guns you can get right there. Yep. Just uh, take the Democrat approach to spending. Just blow it all as quick as you can. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the Republicans aren't any better, so... <laughs> Looks like we do have a lot of uh, grenades and a lot of good weapons to surround the opponents. Have yeah, so they're doing a shotgun. slow walk A, uh, which is a play that can be quite effective as long as you can keep the secret long enough. But now um, they've blown their cover and everybody's going to rotate. Be rotate. Well, no, I say that. Yeah, no, they are. So what's happened is Faulkner doesn't know that they figured it out. Aww. So now they're going to be able to ambush him and... Ooh. Oh, nice shot. Creed left on 4 HP, though. Creed with only 4 HP and able to get off one of those. And he's uh, in a good position to take another, but unfortunately goes down because it's of the 2v2 still, though. Yep. Oh, and Faulkner. 2v1. Come on, Corn Pop. And they get the there win. There it is. Corn Pop with a head shot. <laughs> Love to see it. Beautiful shot. So, match point again. Faulkner... Only has to win eight more rounds to get to overtime. Yep. Super Dish has just completely spent all his money. Yep. So. He is down to $50. $50 in a dream. Yep. <laughs> I'd see that movie, too. <laughs> Dollars in a dream. Coach just likes eating popcorn. He's just watching the movie. Yes. Popcorn, not corn pop. Two completely different things. All right, you see a bunch of uh, Wisconsin Madison holding the staircase, and Raptor Call throwing a nade. Yep, Badgers wanting to end this quickly so that they can get the win. And it looks like they've tried a strategy where they basically made a lot of noise at A and are going to back off, but. Uh, Faulkner uh, has Kite. planted. Yeah, so um, now they've just got to defend it. Can they do that? Not Oh, Ooh. nice angle with Creed. Two. Two. Whoa. Come on, Creed. Get some. Oh, oh no. He does go down. Goes down. But do they have time to defuse? They, they do. Yeah. Well, I say that. He doesn't have a kit. Mm, yeah, it's going to be enough. Unfortunately. Darn. That's going to be game. Very, very good showing from Faulkner tonight. Very yeah. close matches. You love to see the effort and the support and the strategy behind all the things that actually happened tonight. Yeah, and you know what impressed me about it? What is, is it? They kind of got beat up pretty bad in the first round with Inferno, but they didn't let that get them down. Like yeah. they, they didn't like just roll over and be like, okay, well, that's it. Like They, they came up with a plan, they they developed a strategy, and they were like, look, we're, we're going to stay in this, and we're going to walk out of this season with our heads held high. And uh, I appreciate seeing that from them. So yep. uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to interview one of our players tonight. So we'll be right back with the post-game show in just a minute. My name is Mike Carriage, and I teach computer science at Faulkner. Computer science at Faulkner is dramatically changing right now. It's an exciting time to be here. We're adding new students, which is exciting for all of us, but we're also growing in the content in which we deliver. We're adding new courses, we're adding new curriculums. It's a time that things seem to be really exciting and things seem to be really changing rapidly inside of our field. Computer science will always be a rapidly evolving field. Everything from artificial intelligence to cybersecurity will always drive us to excellence. But here at Falcon, we embrace that change as opposed to ignore it. Many of our students find their niche in the computer science world by coming here, and that's what we hope to, to really drive the love of computer science into our students here. I'm telling you, of any place you want to be to learn computer science, Faulkner is the place to be right now.
Earn your online Master's of Science in Management from Faulkner in one year. With a focus on HR management, leadership and ethics, and strategic management, you'll gain the skills to succeed. Apply today at faulkner.edu. And welcome back, folks. Thank you so much for being with us here for our coverage of Faulkner versus Wisconsin-Madison here for Counter-Strike 2. I'm head coach Caleb Colquitt, and I am here with our team captain, captain of the Counter-Strike 2 team. That's going to be Corn Pop, Cole Armstrong. Sure. Yep. Yeah, so uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about, Corn Pop, and it was the thing that I mentioned as soon as we had the game end, it would have been really easy for, especially like um, you... Uh, know that you're not going to be able to make the playoffs and they uh, after you know losing that first win 13-0 it would have been easy for you guys to be just like give up roll over and and we'll just get through this and be done but you guys didn't do that so I want to know like what was the strategy for keeping the guys motivated and actually having a, a, a much better showing in the second half well it's like to that always saying yeah you gotta get good by playing better players and that's mm -hmm. what it really comes down to so um the main uh yeah like you said was just keeping their morale up i know it's hard to lose that bad but um just focusing on the key points of what uh better teams do uh, really helps to learn and understand uh what to take on to the next game so that's what i was trying to do and tell the guys just like yeah we're losing but really try to use this uh for next semester and uh learn something from this game because there's always something to learn from a loss yeah for sure and and i've always said as a coach uh, a lot of times you actually wind up learning more about yourself by losing than you do winning like obviously i'd rather win like i wouldn't be a coach if i didn't but <laughs> ultimately i do think you learn more about yourself from your losses uh one thing that i wanted to ask about too because it seemed like this was a really cool thing that i personally enjoyed about watching the game even though it didn't get the results that we had it seems like everybody on the team had their highlight moment tonight we had that really late round where creed just was last man standing and was able to take like two in the the last second and almost wound up winning the round uh we had folk hydra going crazy like three rounds in a row yeah. where he was just taking <laughs> two and three guys around uh there was that one where um raptor claw was was the last guy and wound up i think he actually that was the round one of the ones we won wasn't it uh my my been i think so i have to look so at the replay yeah and i know it, it does happen really quickly and there's so many rounds it, right. it, they do start to bleed together but my point is like uh and yourself included of course everybody on the team had their like hero moment oh, tonight yeah. which was really <laughs> cool to see for sure uh yeah it was always nice to uh still get a few rounds in uh even against a good team like that uh, right knowing that we still have a few things under wraps um yeah i was glad to have the team still in the high hopes um usually it's really hard to do that but um yeah i was happy with the overall gameplay uh there was a lot of close rounds we just mm -hmm. couldn't they were just really heavy on their rushes and they uh had good chemistry with each other and mm -hmm. just had it down to a t so that was just tough to defend against yeah, one of the easiest ways to tell if a team's really coordinated is watching how they plant. Because if you see a team where uh, they have one guy go in and get to site, and then you immediately see as he's going to plant, all the other guys sort of fan out around yeah. him and take positions. Like, that's a team that's practiced that a lot. Right, for sure, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you could definitely tell that. One thing I did want to ask you about, because, uh, of course, I thought it was one of the most entertaining pieces of the night is that round i want to say it was like seven or eight rounds into uh, vertigo where you basically and i'm going to use a league of legends term here but I, i'm pretty sure the audience will get what i'm picking up you almost kited them <laughs> like know, uh, that is, uh, <laughs> so kiting is in league of legends where you basically like hit and then run away and make them chase you and hit and run yeah, away and make them okay, chase you gotcha. that was one of your rounds where you wound up getting three kills and wound up going all the way back to spawn yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I remember that. So what was that like? How were how were you able to pull that one off? Um, I was surprised they kept following uh following me into my little domain. Um I think that's what I was trying to practice with the guys is just how important the crosshair placement is. Mm -hmm. Kill one, back it up, line up my crosshair because that's where their wide peak is and mm -hmm. so it just worked perfectly at that moment. So I was surprised that they were just eager to break through and it just fell in. Yeah, um, really thought that that might even uh, result in a round win, but uh, still, it was super entertaining to watch. <laughs> like, Josh and I were just laughing our heads off the whole time that was happening. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, 
unfortunately, you know, of course, don't get the uh, the with the win that you wanted tonight right. going out of the season. But what are you going to work on in the off season with these guys, and what are you going to tell them to to sort of uh, tighten up the screws on right. so we can come back strong for next season? Um, as you can see through the uh, gameplay, we we're still working on our chemistry together. Uh, still a little rusty with moving as a team, uh, working as a team. Um, so yeah, definitely need to brush up uh, in those areas. Defense is not too bad. We're slowly getting there, uh, but yeah, definitely heavily offense. We need to fix. Uh, we're just a few holes in there. Um, mm -hmm. We're a little skittish, which is a, it's an easy fix uh, once we break that barrier. Right. But yeah, um, just getting just get that self confidence yeah, exactly. up. So we'll help with that a lot too. Yeah, an easy boost. So mm -hmm. uh, shouldn't be too bad uh, for a second semester practicing that kind of stuff. And then side note of just the basics uh, and whatnot. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here with us, and we appreciate you uh, being willing to give a little bit of your time to us. That's uh, Corn Pop. He's a bad dude. <laughs> <laughs> Cole Armstrong, he's the captain of the CS2 team, and uh, I would, this is normally the part of the show where I'd tell you about the next broadcast, but uh, we don't have one. This is the last broadcast of the season, so finish out that season strong. We'll be back with all five of our games and broadcast. Uh, usually they start the second season around the last week of January, maybe the first week of february so be checking out our social media on facebook on twitter or x i think is what they call it now they you know change things too quickly for my taste um so uh, any of the social media whether you follow us on instagram facebook twitter any of those be sure to check back to make sure uh when our schedules are up as soon as those are made available to us through nace we'll of course let you guys know and you'll be able to ch check it out so you don't miss a single game thank you so much for being with us this season it's been super fun guys we certainly appreciate it uh we appreciate all of the support from parents staff faculty that's been watching these broadcasts and of course the other east sports teammates and everybody at home that might be watching that uh, is not connected to the uh, to the university but just likes esports yeah. so uh, we appreciate all of your support for that as well a special thanks to everybody that made this possible to our producer kp page uh, who's been doing a fantastic job and making sure we stay on the air to my broadcast partner josh chauchi doing color commentary we uh, certainly appreciate him giving up part of his friday night to be able to do that of course i'm head coach caleb colquitt thanks so much for being with us this season uh, season for the last time this season until we start everything back up in january stay the course friends the preceding broadcast was an official presentation of faulkner university it may not be redistributed without the express written consent of the faulkner university athletic department regitar usa high res arena is sponsored by regitar usa the national anthem was performed by the faulkner university chorus if you would like to learn more about the Faulkner Esports program, visit our official website at FaulknerEagles.com or follow us on Discord, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram for all the latest news and events. Thank you for watching and soar Eagles!